हेलो एवरीबडी वी हैव बिन टॉकिंग अबाउट फ्री वाइब्रेशन ऑफ टू डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम इन विच वी हैव कंसिडर्ड एन इक्वालंट टू डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम विच हैज गॉट टू मासेस सपोर्टेड यूजिंग थ्री स्प्रिंग्स थ्री स्प्रिंग्स वी आर कंसिडरिंग टू बी ऑफ आइडेंटिकल स्टिफनेसिस एंड वी ऑल्सो हैव कंसिडर्ड दैट मास ऑल्सो बोथ द मास ब्लॉक्स हैव गॉट आइडेंटिकल मास एंड वी हैव सॉल्व फ्री वाइब्रेशन एनालिसिस प्रॉब्लम ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब दिस पर्टिकुलर सेट सिस्टम वी हैव सीन दैट हाउ एग्जैक्टली सिस्टम्स रिस्पॉन्स इज वेन इट इज वाइब्रेटिंग फ्रीली फॉर सर्टन इनिशियल कंडीशन सेट सो इन दैट वॉट वी हैव डन इज वी हैव ऑल्सो आइडेंटिफाइड नेचुरल फ्रीक्वेंसीज एंड मोर शेप्स ऑफ द सिस्टम Uh, and we are now going to study how exactly is going to be the system's response when it is acted upon by an externally applied force system okay which looks something like this f1 cos cosine omega t and f2 cosine omega t where omega is the frequency of externally applied forcing and you will be able to appreciate that uh, the way force on the first mass is behaving in the time domain in the same fashion the other mass is also vibrating or behaving in the second domain uh, in the time domain okay so you can write down systems uh, set of equation equations which govern the motion of the system which will be like this 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 much we already have done in case of free vibration analysis okay to that whatever that we have derived before to that only uh, non homogeneous term that is the term on the right hand side of the equation is going to get added okay so otherwise this stuff which is on the left hand side is identical and what gets added over here is f1 f2 times cosine of omega t okay so uh, you will be able to appreciate as i just now have said that uh, both uh, the forces which are acting on a uh, force components which are acting on mass number 1 and mass number 2 they are having identical dependence uh, time dependence and only amplitudes are different and these amplitudes are f1 and f2 so if such kind of forcing is acting on to it then what would be the system's response is something that we are going to see in the today's class we are going to actually derive uh, the system's response using two methods okay the first method that we are going to see in the today's class is a straight away extension of what we have done in case of single degree of freedom system and it is applicable specifically when you have uh, such kind of harmonic forcing and uh, both these uh, forces are having identical harmonic dependence and uh, also it is what uh, it need it is applicable when you have uh, <coughs> system which is having very few degrees of freedom such as two or maximum three number of degrees of freedom uh, however in more generalized case when you have a very large system or when forcing is not obeying whatever constraints that we have just now uh, talked about so in that case we go for a more generalized approach that i'll be telling you in the next class okay so let's start with the very basic simple approach which is an extension of what we have done before uh, in case of single degree of freedom system and what we'll be doing in that approach is that we'll be approximating the solution okay again we are considering only steady state part of the solution okay and we are saying that steady state part of the solution is something like this capital x1 capital x2 this vector is a vector of amplitudes of mass number 1 and mass number 2 and we are saying that time dependence is like this omega t minus phi okay so uh, both mass number 1 and mass number 2 are assumed to vibrate uh, in a synchronous fashion with circular frequency omega Okay, they are harmonic with circular frequency omega, and they are lagging both of these, both of these uh, motions. That is motion of mass number one and motion of mass number two. Both of them are lagging 
by an angle identical angle phi when compared with the externally applied forcing okay this is the approximation so what we are doing is we are kind of uh, assuming that temporal dependence of x1 and x2 is exactly identical as forcing has got identical temporal dependence okay so this is what is the approximation so if this has to happen so what are the conditions on x1 and x2 can we at all get any solution of this form okay whether that solution exists or not so that is something that we are going to see in the today's class okay. so we we are assuming this kind of form and what we'll be doing is we'll be putting it over here in our differential equation so when we do that what we get is this one okay so uh, the first term that you have is m 0 0 m which is this mass matrix and you have time or uh, second uh, derivative of the time of uh, uh, this one that is this this is the acceleration vector and uh, you have to take second derivative of this displacement vector and if you do so then uh, you are going to get something like this x1 x2 times you are having this minus omega square term coming into picture and cosine of omega t minus phi is what is the first term okay plus the second term is 2k it is 2k minus k minus k 2k times capital x1 capital x2 times cosine of omega t minus phi right and this entire stuff is equal to f1 f2 times cosine of omega t okay so i can rearrange this in a slightly different fashion i can write and i can write down it in this fashion okay so i'll write down this part force which is coming from the stiffness matrix and then i'll take care of it which is minus omega square times mass matrix that is m 0 0 m this entire stuff multiplied by x1 x2 cosine of omega t minus phi okay which is equal to f1 f2 cosine of omega t so this is what this is x this is our displacement vector right okay steady state part of the displacement vector so i can write down this as 2k minus omega square m minus k minus k 2k minus omega square m multiplied by this x1 x2 which is equal to f1 f2 times cosine of omega t and hence you can write down steady state part of this displacement this is steady state part that is equal to inverse of this matrix you are taking this matrix over here and pre multiplying by that inverse so you are going to get like this 2k minus omega square m minus k minus k 2k minus omega square m inverse of this matrix multiplied by f1 f2 times cosine of omega t okay now this is uh, the total rather the steady 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 state part of the displacement okay uh, and if you are interested in knowing what is the amplitude of the steady state part of the, this displacement then obviously what you will be doing is you will be putting this to be equal to 1 okay you are going to say that this is 1 okay so if it if it is maximum okay so for that maximum what you are going to get is what is going to be the amplitude which will be equal to x1 x2 okay so amplitude that is going to turn out to be equal to inverse of this matrix which is 2k minus omega square m minus k minus k 2k minus omega square m inverse of this matrix multiplied by f1 f2 okay now uh, we can solve it pretty easily it's not a big deal as we have only two degrees of freedoms with us okay you can imagine if we if you have a very a big system which has got something like let's say um, few hundreds of degrees of freedom system uh, degrees involved into it so then how are you going to do that okay, it's going to be really difficult in that case okay, so uh, we generally don't go for such kind of method in that such kind of cases where we have really large uh, number of dofs to take care of okay but when we have really very few number of dofs as we have just now with us 
एंड फोर्सिंग इज हारमोनिक देन वी कैन सर्टनली थिंक ऑफ ऑप्टिंग फॉर द मेथड दैट राइट नाउ वी आर यूजिंग ओके सो विल बी टेकिंग इनवर्स ऑफ दिस मेट्रिक्स इनवर्स ऑफ दिस मेट्रिक्स विल बी वन ओवर डिटर्मिनेंट एंड डिटर्मिनेंट इज इट विल बी फोर के स्क्वायर माइनस फोर के एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर प्लस ओमेगा स्क्वायर इट विल बी ओमेगा टू फोर इट विल बी एम स्क्वायर ओमेगा रेस टू फोर माइनस के स्क्वायर टाइम्स इट विल बी टू के माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वायर एम एंड साइन ऑफ दिस के दिस ऑफ डायगोनल टर्म साइन ऑफ दीज ऑफ डायगोनल टर्म्स दैट इज गोइंग टू चेंज एंड इट विल बी प्लस के प्लस के नो ओके सो यू विल बी राइटिंग इट इन दिस फैशन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय एफ वन एफ टू ओके विच कम्स आउट टू बी इक्वल टू सो आई एल सिंप्लीफाई दिस दिस इज थ्री के स्क्वायर आई एल राइट डाउन दिस इन दिस फैशन थ्री के एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर माइनस के एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर प्लस एम स्क्वायर ओमेगा रेस टू फोर टाइम्स यू कैन राइट डाउन एट इन दिस वे टू के माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वायर एम एफ वन प्लस के एफ टू एंड दिस विल बी के एफ वन प्लस टू के माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वायर एम टाइम्स एफ टू राइट सो विच हैपन्स टू बी इक्वल टू दिस इज द वेक्टर ऑफ एम्पलीट्यूड्स ओके दिस हैपन्स टू बी इक्वल टू वन ओवर इट इज के माइनस एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर एंड थ्री के माइनस एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर times this entire vector which is 2k minus omega square m f1 plus k f2 and it is k f1 plus 2k minus omega square m f1 okay so this is what is uh, the amplitude vector that you have obtained you multiply by cosine omega t minus phi and you get to see what is going to be the steady state part of the displacement okay However, uh, what we'll be doing now is we'll be assuming that let f two be equal to zero, which essentially means that you are applying force only at mass number one. So mass number two is something which is not experiencing an externally applied force. Okay. However, externally applied force is there on mass number one. Okay. And let f one be equal to f zero. Okay, which is the amplitude of force. Okay. If it is so, then I can write down. X one and X two as it is going to be equal to two k minus omega square m divided by k minus omega square m times three k minus omega square m. This all multiplied by F zero. and you are going to have this one over here which will be uh, it's merely k here k divided by k minus omega square m 3k minus omega square m times f0 okay now i'll take uh, individual amplitudes in hand okay let me first consider the first amplitude x1 okay and let me simplify whatever expression that we have obtained So this is the expression that we have obtained, right? And you have f zero over here. Now what I'll be doing is I'll be taking k common from this and out of this bracket. Similarly, from here and out of this bracket, I'll be again taking k common and out of this bracket over here. Okay, and let me try to see what I get. If I do so, then I'll be writing down x one as it will be k times two minus m 
omega square divided by k divided by again k is going to come out and you are going to get 1 minus m omega square by 1 minus m omega square by k one more k is going to come out of the second bracket and you are going to get this 3 minus m omega square by k and to this you have f0 in multiplication okay this k and this k is going to go out k cancel out with each other and you are going to get this stuff times f0 by k this f0 by k i am taking it count common and writing it over here okay and i can write down this uh, whatever remains in this fashion okay so it is 2 minus see this this is what k by m right 1 over k by m and we already have solved the system okay so this system so we started with this one okay we have started we have uh, solved eigenvalue problem for this particular system and we have found out that there exist two eigenvalues first eigenvalue is uh, which is omega let us say n1 square that comes out to be equal to k by m and other eigenvalue is this one which is 3 k by m okay so we have these three oh, sorry two eigenvalues Okay, which we already have solved in our previous classes. Now, I am going to invoke this okay, that this is what is omega n 1 square which, which is equal to k by m and 3 k by m is equal to omega n 2 square okay, which is the second eigenvalue okay, and I am going to put those expressions that we have derived. So, this one which is an in uh, the numerator okay, which is 2 minus omega square by so it is like this omega square by k by m k by m is what k by m is omega n 1 square so i can write down what uh, what is there in the numerator as 2 minus omega square by omega n 1 square right and then this term in the denominator that becomes equal to 1 minus omega square by omega n 1 square now the second bracket in the denominator that comes out to be equal to 3 minus m omega square by oh sorry i should have written it in this fashion which is equal to omega square by omega n square n 1 square right and this term 3 which is coming over here okay this is actually equal to ratio of omega n 2 square by omega n 1 square okay, which is equal to 3 k by m divided by 1 over k by m okay, which is equal to 3 right. So, this 3 is nothing but ratio of omega n 2 square by omega n 1 square. Okay, so, you can replace this 3 by this this one okay, and hence I will be able to write down x 1 as 2 minus omega square by omega n 1 square divided by 1 minus omega square by omega n 1 square and you have omega n 2 square by omega n 1 square minus omega square by omega n 1 square. Right, C to it. So, if it is right, and to this, what is coming in, uh, in over here as a multiplier? Okay, so it will be F0 by K, which is nothing but uh, this comes out to be static displacement of mass number. 1 ok. So, I can write down x 1 by f 0 by k which is the non dimensional parameter as 2 minus omega square by omega n 1 square divided by this, this set of terms ok which is 1 minus omega square by omega n 1 square 
एंड ओमेगा इन टू स्क्वायर बाय ओमेगा इन वन स्क्वायर माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वायर बाय ओमेगा इन वन स्क्वायर कि यू पुट वैल्यू ऑफ ओमेगा इन दिस एंड यू आर गोइंग टू गेट दिस दिस रेशो ओके सो दैट इज गोइंग टू टेल यू दिस दिस रेशो दैट दैट रेशो विल टेल यू वॉट इज एक्स वन इन कंपेरिजन विद एफ जीरो बाई के दिस इज वॉट इज द स्टोरी ऑफ एक्स वन एंड इफ यू सी वॉट इज एक्स टू एक्स टू इज प्रिटी सिंपल टू डिराइव विच इज हैविंग के इन द न्यूमरेटर एंड यू हैव द सेम स्टफ इन द डिनोमिनेटर विच इज के माइनस एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर एंड थ्री के माइनस एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर टाइम्स एफ जीरो राइट अगेन यू विल बी टेकिंग के आउट फ्रॉम दिस ब्रैकेट एंड दिस ब्रैकेट सो इट विल बी के टाइम्स एफ जीरो डिवाइडेड बाई वन के इज कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम दिस ब्रैकेट एंड यू आर लेफ्ट विथ वन माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वायर बाय ओमेगा एन वन स्क्वायर टाइम्स के टाइम्स अगेन थ्री इज समथिंग विच इज गोइंग टू कम ओवर ह्योर विच आई बी डायरेक्टली रिप्लेसिंग बाय ओमेगा एन टू स्क्वायर बाय ओमेगा एन वन स्क्वायर माइनस ह्योर यू आर गोइंग टू गेट ओमेगा स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय के बाय एम which happens to be equal to omega square divided by omega n1 square okay so this k and this k will get cancelled and again you are going to get this x2 uh, if you are interested in finding out the non dimensional part of x2 then you can write down in it in this way if you are interested in knowing what is the dimensional x2 then this f0 by k will come over here on the other side of this equal to sign so uh, the non non dimensional uh, x2 comes out to be like this which is equal to 1 over 1 minus omega square by omega n1 square times omega n2 square by omega n1 square minus omega square by omega n1 square okay so this is what is non dimensional x2 and this is what is non dimensional x1 that we have obtained by the, uh, the this method that we are going to uh, that we already have talked about okay so this is a very uh, simple straightforward method which is kind of an extension of what we have seen before in a single degree of freedom system uh, however as i just now have told you that it is applicable only when you have harmonic loading and that too when mass number 1 and mass number 2 have got identical time dependence both of them are harmonic functions and identical that is they are moving uh, that uh, force is also synchronous and also uh, when you have very few number of degrees of freedom uh, involved into your system in that case you can think of opting for such kind of solution method okay but uh, in any other case we don't go for this but we are having one generalized method that we are going to talk uh, in the uh, next class but before that let's just try to plot what we have obtained and let's try to see how does it look like okay let me try to plot variation of this x1 by f0 by k okay so if i have to plot that variation it will look something like this okay now we have two critical points here okay so let me write down this as omega square by omega n1 square okay or you can simply write it down as omega square whatever that you feel appropriate if you write down this as omega square then this one is omega n1 square and this one is omega n2 square if you decide to write down this as omega this represent this x axis as omega square by omega n1 square then this becomes 1 and this becomes omega n2 square by omega n1 square okay which is the ratio of two natural frequencies that we have obtained okay and now there is one critical point over here which is 1 okay and let's try to look at the expression and let's try to uh, predict how exactly it is going to look like okay so it looks like this goes to infinity when omega square becomes exactly equal to omega n1 square okay when omega is equal to omega n1 square then this term okay 
which is 1 minus omega square by omega n1 square sitting in the denominator that goes to 0 because this x ratio becomes 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0 what you get and hence you are getting infinite amplitude that is you get to see resonance. The way we have seen in case of single degree of freedom system we will we see that resonance here also and that resonance the first resonance that is obtained at frequency equal to omega n1 square when externally applied forcing has got frequency equal to omega n1 square then you get to see a resonance ok. Similarly, when omega square will take value equal to omega n2 square then this becomes this ratio becomes omega n2 square by omega n1 square which is exactly same as that of this one ok and then this bracket this entire bracket goes to 0 and when this bracket goes to 0 again you get to see infinite amplitude. So, you are getting infinite amplitude there as well and this is how system behavior is ok. It is infinite here again goes to the infinity and then it drops down like this and it reaches to 0 with increasing value of omega square. This is what is the expression or uh, uh, plot of this x1 by f0 by k. If you decide to plot the other displacement, displacement of the other mass which is x2 by f0 by k again the non dimensional one and you decide to have this as omega square divided by omega n1 square. Then uh, plot of that particular displacement that is going to look like this ok. I will draw that plot once again. So, this is 1, this is omega n2 square by omega n1 square builds up goes to infinity then comes like this reaches to a minimum value then again builds up goes to negative infinity then from here it approaches from this side and this is what it is ok. So, this sign which is flip of this line sign where here it is positive and here it is negative or negative here and then the positive here. This flip of sign as we already have discussed in case of single degree of freedom system is equivalent to having phase difference equal to pi or 0. So, when you have a positive sign then there is 0 phase difference when you have negative sign then you have pi units of phase difference. So, till this till you are over here in this range you have 0 phase difference when you are in this range you are having pi phase difference phase lag and when you are over here in this range then again it is 0. Similarly, in your earlier case here it is in this case here it is 0 up to this limit when you are over here it is equal to pi then there is a crossover somewhere ok where we are going to talk about that ok and what is the implication of this point can we utilize this point uh, in designing something that we are going to talk about this is a point of importance we are going to talk talk about that ok where uh, this amplitude of mass number 1 becomes 0 ok somewhere in between steady state part of the amplitude and again here you have in this region you have 0 phase lag ok. So, initially here when you are over here system is going to vibrate in sync with the externally applied force and uh, this is how it is going to be like ok time dependence okay. when you are in this region then phase difference is pi and then at that time you can either write down this as omega t minus pi or you can write down as minus cosine of omega t right. So, this minus sign you can accommodate over here as a phase difference or a phase lag of pi units ok. So, uh, this is what is uh, response of a t 2 degree of freedom system obtained using a simple uh, method ok. Uh, specifically we have used this method for 
that system which is excited by harmonic force which is external harmonic force and force system which is acting on to two masses they, they these two forces are in sync with each other okay when this happens and when you have two or three degree of freedom systems then you can certainly go for this kind of method however as i just now have told you that we are going to see another method okay, which is a better and generalized method and it can be used for generalized forcing as well that forcing need not also be harmonic still that method can be used and that we are going to study in the next class okay so for time being we are stopping over here and uh, we will be once again discussing this uh, systems response to degree of freedom systems response using that method and we are going to have uh, a detailed look at uh, these displacement plots that we have just now seen okay we are going to see them in detail okay uh, thank you we will be stopping over